So in this video, we are going to talk about two to the power n, that is exponentially growth with the time complexity of a specific algorithm. This is one of the worst time complexity, which is taking the hell amount of time for your algorithm. And then if your algorithm is written with this time complexity and the algorithm is giving you two to the power n time complexity, that is exponentially you are growing with the more and more input size of the data that you are giving to the algorithm, it will take more time. It is like really crazy and one of the worst time complexity. One of the example, let's see, there is number of sets are there and you're dividing the sets into multiple parts. And then until you reach the final set, and then you have to keep dividing into multiple a sub, a subset. You have to take it from the superset. Or let's see, recursively in the Fibonacci series that you try to calculate that, okay, fine, give me first 10 Fibonacci series number, then it's fine. But for a small amount of data, which is fine. But let's see, tomorrow you have, uh, give me top 100 Fibonacci series number in the series, then it will take a lot of time if you solve it, this particular problem with the recursive function. So in that case, it will exponentially grow and the time complexity two to the power n. And then in the worst case, it will give you a really, really bad performance in that case. I'll give you an example. And uh, I hope you can uh, see this particular example here that exponentially time complexity. If you see that I've simply created a method that this method Fibonacci series, and then I'm taking one parameter. And uh, if n is less than or equal to one, then return n. Otherwise, simple call this particular function of n minus one and n minus two. So what is Fibonacci series that let's see first top five numbers I really want to get. So it will be like zero and then one number will start from zero and one. And then the third number will be the addition of last two numbers. So one plus zero is equal to one over here, right? And then one plus one is equal to two. Then two plus one is equal to three. Then three plus two is equal to five. And five plus three is equal to eight like this. So I have to keep adding last two numbers and uh, just keep adding the next number. So this is called what a Fibonacci a series or sequence we are getting it. And this function is saying, okay, fine. Tell me how many numbers that you want to generate that up to how many numbers you want to generate the Fibonacci series. I'm simply passing N over here. Then I'm writing, okay, N less than equal to one and return N. And then I'm just keep dividing. I mean, keep uh, subtracting minus one and minus two. And then I'm just keep adding it. So for example, let's see zero one, it will give you one plus zero is equal to one. And then one plus two is equal to three. Two plus three is equal to five. Three plus five is equal to eight. So it will keep adding and return it. And I'll say, okay, fine. For N is equal to five. This is the total number of Fibonacci series I want. And then I'm creating one simple static array. And this length of this particular array, the number of N that I have written here, let's see in case of, in this case, it is five. And I'm starting a loop and I'm calling this particular function. And this function is recursively calling its, Okay, recursively calling the same function over here. And I'm passing i, i is let's see first time zero. Zero will be given to this guy, zero less than n, it will return n immediately. So in that case at zeroth location, zero will be stored over there, right? Same thing then next time i is equal to one, one will be given. One is again less than equal to one, condition is again satisfied. So at first position, after first uh, zero index, first index, uh, one will be stored over there. Then i is equal to in that case a uh, two, then again, two is not less than equal to one. It will be two minus one, which is equal to one and two minus two is equal to zero. In that case, it will add those last two numbers and then it will be stored at the, to the next index over here. So once the entire for loop is done up to uh, zero less than five or uh, five less than five, the condition will break over here. And then it will fill this entire array and I'm just printing this array over here. So let's see, just, just to calculate the first five numbers, Let's see what exactly the output that we are getting. The first Fibonacci number is zero one one two three over here. I'll do one thing. I'll just generate in a new line over here. So I'll just simply write LN so that you will see the next line here. And now you can see the first five Fibonacci numbers are zero one one two three over here like this. Perfect. So this is fine. Here you can see first five numbers we are getting. But now let's see the moment I increase it to a 10. So how many iterations it will perform in that case. So let's see in case of 10, is it taking more time and then it will give you that the number of up to 10, it will give it to you. It means total 10 Fibonacci series, it will give it to you. Here you can see the length of the array will be 10 and 10 numbers are coming here. And then addition of last two numbers, one plus one is equal to two, two plus one is equal to three, five plus three is equal to eight and so on like that. So that's what if you tomorrow, if you calculate, let's see with the, I'm saying, let's see with the hundred, 
then you can see that the billions of billions combination it will take and it will take more time in that case because up to 100 numbers you can think about it that how exactly it will calculate and then see i'm opening my console output and then try to see that it will the program is still running and it's taking a lot of lot of time to calculate the top 100 numbers over here because see it's not giving you the output it's still calculating because every time the last two numbers will be added and recursively i'm just calling this particular function like this Although Fibonacci number you can achieve with the O of N also, but this is just to give you an example that 2 to the power N means number of subset it will just keep creating. it. So I'm not going to run it because see this is still not giving me the correct, uh, uh, I mean given it's not giving me the output in the within the time, this is still taking some time. So I'm just going to manually terminate it from here. So how exactly it is actually calculating and then we will see the graph also. Now let's see the same example if the number is equal to 4. So how many sets it will create actually. So let's see uh, the function name is Fibonacci 4. The 4 is n is equal to 4 in that case, right? So the 4 first that will be divided into like this. So first it will take Fibonacci 3 and then let's see the function it will take a 2 over here. Then again 3 will be divided into two parts. That is a 2 and then one over here so i'll say this is fibonacci 2 and then this is one and then this two will be divided into once again two part that is uh, fibonacci number one and then a number zero over here and then this two is again divided into two part that is again fibonacci one and then uh, zero over here and then one will not be divided so we finally once we get fibonacci one zero one one and one zero so for this particular four how many iterations it is actually performing. So if you uh, see this for, let's see, for example, if n is equal to three, for n is equal to three, it is actually doing eight iterations or eight operations. For n is equal to four, it is actually doing around 16 operations. It will take that. So same thing if you are doing n is equal to 10, which is taking around 1024 operations, it will perform. So same thing if I write n is equal to 100, then you can think about it if, Right now, this n equal to 4, but if it is 100, so first 100 will be what? 100 will be 99, then this 98. Then again, 99 will be divided like 98, then 97, this, this 97, this, this is 96. Then again, it will be divided like this. So it will keep dividing exponentially here like this. Right? So it will exponentially, it will increase. So that's what with n equal to 100 is like really really crazy it's such a big amount of time it will take it over here i would say the billions of operations it will it has to perform to calculate the top 100 fibonacci number with this approach with the approach that we have used it over here so that's what whenever you have to find out from the superset and then keep dividing into subset then the time complexity it will give you 2 to the power n times over here okay so this is the time complexity for these kind of n uh, algorithms and this is also called exponential time complexity so same thing if you see on the graph how exactly it will be represented on the graph 2 to the power n exponential graph the exponential graph will always go like this so let's see if the exponential is uh, defined with this color and then i'm going to create something like this over here like that it is just almost parallel to y-axis so this is what 2 to the power n for a small uh, input size this is fine but for when you have a larger amount of uh, data then in that case it will be a really really bad and it, your application might get a crash also in that case so that's why if you see come back to this particular uh, example once again for up to uh, two or three or let's see up to uh, five number it is quickly calculating it see if i'm writing is equal to four n is equal to four then you are getting the result very quickly over here you just open the console and then see quickly it is calculating it. You just keep increasing the number. You write out like, okay, for n is equal to seven up to seven. Then let's see what is, see it's calculating total seven numbers you are getting. And then you try to increase it. Let's see up to 15. Now I want 15 Fibonacci numbers here. So that is the last number will be 377. So the more and more input size that you will start giving, it will start like, 377 plus 233 it will generate a, a bigger number then bigger number plus last two numbers then again it is going crazy in that case so that's what this is the one of the worst time complexity that you are using it so this is called exponentially time complexity which is represented with exponentially it will grow an exponential equation that we always write 2 to the power n 
okay like this and that's why the time complexity big o of 2 to the power n exponentially equation it will give that i hope it's clear thank you so much